Well, howdy ho again, folks. Welcome back to the Square the Circle Music Channel. It's me, your old pal Mage again. Remember me from a couple nights ago? Yeah, well, here I am again. And uh, you're back with me. We're talking about music appreciation, uh, collecting music, uh, specifically in vinyl format, but I also talk about other formats as well. Uh, and I happen to dance around many other colorful subjects. Come join me, come sit by the fire. Let's hang out for a while. Got a fun episode for you tonight. That's right, really excited about this one because it includes uh, a subject, a topic um, that I'm quite fond of. Um, that would be women. I'm, <laughs> aren't we all? Aren't we all just uh, totally enamored and taken aback by the power of uh, the female species on this planet, the female human species to be quite specific, um, and all of the magic that they can create uh, with their minds and with their bodies and whatever else. And this is going to be uh, specifically speaking about the music that they make and how big of a fan I am uh, of a lot of it. So um, I'm going to highlight 10 of my very favorite female artists uh, that I have in my collection. Uh, these are going to be uh, maybe solo artists. It's going to be just a mixed bag of things, you know. Some of them are going to be, you know, the front, um, you know, front singer, songwriters, you know, guitar players, whatever, of um, of bands, musical groups. Uh, some are going to be solo artists, like I said, and uh, beyond. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to get right into it this evening, uh, talking about my top 10 favorite female artists. Here we go. Uh, first on the list, I have uh, brought this one up quite a bit uh, in recent past. Well, not specifically on the main part of my channel. If anybody checks out my little, like, you know, uh, <laughs> the subreddit or whatever, you know, the, uh, the, the hidden dungeon of my, of my channel, which I call uh, Tinkle Tunes, which, you know, gets a max of about, you know, 20 to 30 views <laughs> per episode. It's kind of a niche episode, but it's fun, so check it out. Um, I've highlighted her on that episode a couple times, and actually, she this, this album specifically that I'm going to bring out and show you um, was pretty high up on my top 10 list, the first video I ever did, of my favorite releases of 2020. So, uh yeah, specifically speaking, this album by one of my very, very favorite uh, female artists these days. Her name is Mary Lattimore, uh, and this is her album, Silver Ladders, specifically, but she has lots of music out there to check out, so check out all of it. She is a modern-day contemporary harpist. She plays the the harp, the stand-up, you know, concert harp, or whatever, however you want to refer to it. Um, but it's just divine, you know? Uh, mixed with lots of other instrumentations by other people. She invites a lot of people to play on this album specifically. Um, and this stuff is a little a little bit off the beaten path. It's not so what you would uh, think to be, you know, kind of a classical harp album, you know, where it's just going to be kind of like a straight symphonic type of album. This is very, very experimental and very cool and ethereal and kind of new agey, if you get what I, I, if you get what I mean. It's not super, you know, hokey and dorky. Um, really beautiful piece of art, and she, I just adore her. She, like I said, she has a lot of work there uh, out there, so check it all out. Um, she is, she's American. She hails from, uh, I believe, L.A. I think she's from Los Angeles, California. Um, but she's still young, so she's still got a magnificent career ahead of her, and you can expect to see and hear her name uh, for many, many decades to come, I'm sure. So, um, Again, Mary Lattimore, and everybody check out specifically this album, Silver Ladders. Just love and adore everything she does. It's everything she puts her magical fingers upon just turns to gold. So, yeah, absolutely wonderful. Check that out, guys. Oh, yeah, and it bears mentioning uh, really cool wax on this one. I kind of like this, you know, super clear with, uh, what would you call that? Just It's just splatter, right? Like kind of an interesting kind of silver gray splatter in there. Uh, pretty badass. So kind of goes with the theme of the, uh, the Silver Ladders, Starry Night, kind of sleepy dog vibes. <laughs> it's great. Cool fucking record. So there's number 10 on my list. Uh, moving up that ladder, so to speak, 
Uh, number nine on this list is uh, <clears throat> one could say um, not to knock Mary Lattimore at all, but her career is kind of fledgling. Um, this is an icon of uh, rock and roll history. Some would say, I mean, a lot of people um, know who she is. If you're if you're at all interested or you love uh, progressive rock of the 70s, kind of not, I wouldn't say early era, not Canterbury era, but um, definitely kind of the, you know, the blossoming, you know, early 70s uh, Prague era of the United Kingdom. Uh, these guys were definitely heavyweights of symphonic rock, prog rock, love the shit out of Renaissance uh, and everything they've done. But Anne Haslam is her name. I don't know if she goes by Annie Haslam or is it just Anne Haslam? But anyway, how just she has such a gorgeous voice out of all of the female singers out there that were doing that kind of like rock and roll, you know, not just in the realm of prog rock, symphonic rock, and all the other kind of, you know, subgenres of, you know, there was a lot of really magnificent, you know, female singer, uh, singers out there and songwriters. Um, but her voice just really, it really sticks out. It's so, it's just so beautiful. Her, uh, she has a very, it's not a husky voice, but it's a very beefy um, and lots of range. She she hits a lot of upper soprano range, but she kind of floats more in like the upper alto range, but she still has like a really kind of husky, beefy voice. It's not operatic. She, if anything, reminds me much more of someone who was well-versed in like musical theater. So she can really project and really put it out there. But even when she gets those volumes and that, that really wide, fill the room type of voice, you know, she it's really commanding and just it doesn't it doesn't break that um, just that really just gorgeous, you know, vibrato and just her tone. Her tone doesn't suffer, but she can get that amazing presence and volume, you know. Um, just takes it away on every single album they do. I brought this one out specifically. I have quite a few other albums, but um, this is some of her vet, her best vocal performance, um, if you ask me. Ashes Are Burning, I think 1972, right? It's either 72 or 73. Um, pardon me, yeah, 73. Ashes Are Burning. Away! <laughs> She's so great. Um, I mean, that finishes the, the album, I believe. Yeah, it's like a 12 or 13 minute song. Um, to finish off this album but what an epic journey and what a gorgeous just beautiful singer beautiful woman um, I'm sure along the you know throughout the years of this group I'm sure she had a lot to do with some instrumentation she probably you know doubled on some piano parts and she probably you know played some percussion instruments while on stage and and things like that I'm not I'm not exactly sure if she did or not um, never really the liner notes are not very good in this album, it's just a lyric sheet, basically. It doesn't say anything else about the album and who plays the instruments and whatnot. But I'll, I'll dig deeper into that because I sure do love the shit out of Annie Haslam. So, yeah, she definitely made Renaissance the band that they were, for sure. Um, love that gal. Okay. Uh, this is such a great episode. I love talking about all my favorite women artists. Um, and this gal, whew, specifically. I hope all of you women aren't taking offense to the fact that I use the term gal. Um, you gotta be so careful these days with the things that you say. And I don't mean that to be, you know, offensive. And I don't mean, mean it as a, a put down. I just, I've always used the term. I'm from the West Coast. I'm from Oregon where things are a little bit redneckish. And we've always just used the term gal. So I hope you don't mind. If you do mind, there's other fucking music channels out there. So go watch theirs. <laughs> I talk how I want to talk around here. So this gal... My number eight pick on the list have also brought this up um, a few times because um, it's just magnificent, everything about it. She sings with uh, one of my favorite hardcore, like black metal groups ever. And uh, I hadn't, I didn't know anything about this, this woman until I heard this playing in the record store a couple of years ago. And I immediately knew right off the bat, I was like, holy shit, this is Thou. Does Thou have a new album? And I looked over at the dude behind the counter and I was like, hey man, what the fuck is going on? What is this? It's thou, isn't it? He's like, oh yeah, with this this woman. Uh, her name is Emma Ruth Rundle. 
Emma Ruth Rundle did a collaboration with a, a black metal outfit called Thou, and this album is fucking drop you to your knees badass in every single way, shape, and form. She is uh, kind of on the younger side, I guess you could say. I think she's probably in her early to mid-30s. Um, plays a screaming guitar. She's a songwriter. Amazing pipes on this woman. Man, she can belt it. When she needs to, she can be soft and subtle and poetic and just absolutely beautiful, kind of reminiscent, somewhat reminiscent of like what Tori Amos was doing. Just kind of, you know what I mean? Just kind of that enigmatic kind of dark mystique to her. Playing some really amazing heartfelt tunes and then it can just turn into some like insanely fucking you know <laughs> face melting uh black metal shit it's pretty pretty hardcore pretty fantastic everything about emma ruth rundle makes me just scream and shout love her to death um this is one uh please forgive me i'm not really sure where she's from um i researched i don't know if i researched her specifically but um, she must come out of like New York City or Ohio, something like that. Maybe Ohio. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, I don't really know how she began her career. I didn't uh, look too deep in it. This is kind of like, this is all I really know about her. And it's kind of, it's enough. It's more than enough for me right now. Um, it tickles all, uh, every little bit and piece of me about rock and roll that I love. So everybody if you can get a copy of this uh, it's called may our chambers be full uh collaboration on the uh uh awesome awesome label sacred bones records um but yeah collaboration with the uh, dark metal band called thou and i'm sure she has an extensive career of many many other releases on different labels i'm not sure who she's primarily signed to i don't think she releases all of her music on sacred bones i think this was kind of a, a unique collaboration that they really wanted to uh, throw some money at and it's a good thing sacred bones did because i would maybe bank on the fact that this is probably the best selling emma ruth rundle album uh to date probably so who knows but Sure do adore this product, project that she did. So she's fucking awesome. Emma Ruth Rundle. Everybody check her out. One of my very, very favorite chicks in the rock and roll industry. I'm going to say them all tonight, girls. I'm going to say them all, and it's probably going to piss all you feminists off. It's wonderful, isn't it? All right. Here's another lady that I really enjoy. I love dearly. Her soft, subtle sounds and the way she plunks on her piano uh, makes me scream and shout. I sure dig it. Uh, brought her up again on that channel or the uh, episode that I do on my channel, the Tinkle Tunes episode. Sometimes I do that kind of like on a Sunday morning when I just get out of bed and I cook the kids some eggs and I turn on the camera real quick and kind of just show you what I'm spinning kind of thing. You know, it's all the, uh, <clears throat> the ambient and like soft jazz and all that kind of shit I love. So you guys should wander over and check out my fun. If you can't stand my ramblings that I go on for like an hour about, and that's why you don't particularly like my videos, you might like those videos a lot more. I only ramble for about 10, 15 minutes on those ones. So go check those out. I featured here, her recently on that episode. Uh talked about Liz Story. Liz Story is an American uh, jazz pianist. Um, I don't know if maybe she classifies herself specifically as a jazz pianist, but she's a, an exceptional pianist, uh, primarily known for her career in the late 70s and early 80s when she was doing uh, a lot of soft jazz compositions and works on the Wyndham Hill label, amongst many other, um, you know, new jazz, soft jazz, electronic new wave you know albums and uh, i mean uh, uh record companies that were floating around at that period in time when that stuff was really popular but she's amazing her amazing jazz fingers are what sells her artistry uh she's just fantastic um juilliard educated she went to juilliard college of music um so she knows her shit <laughs> it's pretty fantastic and you know writes all her own stuff all of her own compositions and it's uh yeah, I mean, this album's called Solid Colors, and it's really what her music does, is it really just paints a beautiful kind of pastoral landscape of uh, many different, you know, styles and many different colors. Uh, she's just fabulous. So if you guys aren't familiar with Liz's story, check her out. Um, 
she was, you know, kind of, I think she was born in the late 50s, you know, mid to late 50s probably. So now she's, you know, somewhere around, you know, her early 60s, something like that. I'm sure she still plays in some way, shape or form. Uh, I urge everyone to look into her career and see if it's ongoing. Um, definitely worth your time. And these LPs that you can find in every dusty, dusty dollar bin from here to Timbuktu, you'll get them for a buck and they're always worth it. It's just magnificent. Yeah. If you ever come across any of her works, uh, particularly this one though, solid colors, just beautiful. 1980, probably 1983, somewhere right around there. Um, but yeah, fantastic. All right getting back into the kind of like rock and roll here some of my favorite rock and roll chicks <laughs> oh man you couldn't you can't have a list about you know greatest or favorite you know female artists in rock and roll and beyond uh without this gal being on your list she's just she's too much for words the immortal grace slick and everything she did with jefferson airplane jefferson starship um God, what was that other album? She she was on this kind of like random, um, this random like psych, uh, really cool like psych blues album. But damn it, what was the name of that album? Something Sun? Some, it's got some sort of sun theme on it. But I remember picking that up blindly years back and being really, I really thought it was fantastic. And come to read the back of the album, it's like, oh, Grace Slick sings on this. But yeah, she's just immortal fucking vocalist, you know, everything. Couldn't you want somebody to love? Um, yeah, that song is on this album. <laughs> Bless its pointy little head. What a fantastic, I just, I just recently picked this up, actually. I've never owned this album until just recently. I've had their first before. Um, uh, what is the name of their first album? Uh, Surreal Surrealistic Pillow. I've had many, many, many copies of that, um, but I've never really bought and hold on, held on to a copy of this for very long. And so I really like it. I've given it some spins. And this one, this copy is in fantastic condition. Found it at the thrift store recently. Um, but yeah, everything about her is just magnificent. She can just belt it. And it's what a unique, cool style that everyone can recognize. And not just because of Jim Carrey in the 90s. You know, you, you recognize it just because she is such an immortal American, you know, icon of rock and roll. Not just because she's female either. She's just one of the greatest in rock history. So yeah, thank goodness for Grace Slick. And, and Jefferson Airplane. I got to see Jefferson Starship when I was like in high school. They played my hometown at this large park, a big festival in the park. And I was just like, yeah, <laughs> fucking so cool. And at that point in time, the gal was probably like 50 years old and she was just slaying. It was so fucking cool. Yeah, that was at that period when, you know, a lot of like classic american and 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 you know lots of different artists from the 60s and 70s like these great psychedelic artists from that era like were starting to play like you know small town festivals and county fairs and and things like that because they wanted to remain relevant they wanted to keep continue to make some money off of their career so um really cool in the 90s to be able to see some like insanely cool classic icons of rock and roll and rock rock history I consider myself very, very lucky. So that's, uh, where are we? I always lose count, damn it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. That was 6. This is 5. This is a real, real treat. I was so elated when I discovered this gal. <laughs> so fucking awesome. And boy, she, she can play a guitar. Insanely great songwriter, guitar player. Extraordinaire. Goes by many different monikers, but I think her... Uh, her true name is Hedvig Molestad. Um, so uh, this is her trio. Well, no, actually, this isn't the trio. This is kind of more an extended, elaborated project. She has a band called the Hedvig Molestad Trio. This one is she, it's just by her. It's like a solo project, but she has many more artists that join her on this album. There's at least about six players, five or six players on this album. But this album's called Echidna. She released this... Oh, I want to say 2018. Um, oh, sorry, much later. 2020. Uh, I didn't catch wind of this until much, much later in the year 2020, or else it probably would have been on my top 
of that year, um, top 10 of that year. This album just kicks your ass, man. Oh, Jazz Master plays like a big ass. I don't know if it's a Les Paul, but it's it's one of those kind of like larger Jazz Master guitars and, and just sh fucking shreds on that thing. They do the most insanely cool fusion of, you know, psychedelic, um, psych rock, heavy, like heavy. So it's not blues based though. It's like heavy psych rock mixed with jazz and mixed with elements of prog and mixed with elements of fucking metal. And like, it's so great. Everybody needs to check out this wildly eclectic um, band and album. Just the artist heard, Hedvig, Hedvig Molestad. And she has another surname uh, that she goes by sometimes, uh, Thomason. Hedvig Molestad Thomason is her full name. But you can just type in Hedvig Molestad and she'll pop right up. This album specifically, it was a big one on the Rune Gramophone uh, label that came out, like I said, in 2020. Just badass. Everything in the way of kind of heavy psych jazz. Um, really cool. Really, really cool. And she just, dude, she fucking just slays her guitar. It's wonderful presence. Sorry, I failed to mention. She is a Norwegian artist. This is these, this band is from Norway. I think they hail from Trondheim, where there's like I guess a huge music scene. I'm, I really want to go someday. <laughs> um, huge jazz scene, huge prog scene, huge metal scene, like everything. You know, everything in my opinion, everything great in the world. A lot of the greatest music in the world right now, <laughs> truly, is coming out of Scandinavia. You know, and those those Nordic countries, Denway, Nor uh, or excuse me, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Finland, you know, places like that, Germany too. Like Ooh, that was long winded, but yeah, everybody check out this this artist. Just amazing. Hedvig Molestad. And any of her albums under the name of the trio as well. The trio albums are dope, but this is just a solo album called Echidna. So yeah, check this shit out, guys. It's really great. Get some. A little bit harder to find, probably. You'll have to go on to, like, you know, her website or her band camp and order it. It's going to cost you probably 40 bucks, you know. But if you're, you know, a lover, like I said, of that kind of cool, you know, heavier, stony jazz shit that the Nordic countries are putting out these days, you'll love her. It's magnificent. And primarily um, all instrumental. She, she does sing quite a bit, but on that album, there's almost no vocalizations. It's all instrumental. Pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. All right. Um, I just couldn't go any further on this list. I made this list, and I just have to add this because this was a woman who is kind of just responsible for a lot of the makings of me and music and why I like what I like and, and what feels good and what's what in my head and heart. You know, and if you're from, you know, a period in history that you grew up in the 80s, um, you know, this woman was, you know, such a haunting, beautiful part of everybody's childhood at that period in time. A, a lot of folks that are maybe, you know, 10 to 15 or 20 years older, um, may have a serious gag reflex when they hear this stuff come on. Um, I've heard a lot of people hate on this shit incessantly, but, um, I love it. I still love it. I still have the original cassette tapes that I had when I was a child. Um, I have saved these over a period of 35 plus years. Uh, I love the shit out of Enya. I still do. Um, these two albums specifically, Watermark, which was her second release and her third release called Shepherd Moons. Um, her first album was self-titled. Her name is Enya. I believe her last name is Brennan, something like that. Um, Irish, an Irish gal, of course. Um, got her career started in a pretty famous uh, Irish, you know, folk and pop group called Clannad. And then she, you know, that was like in 1982 or something like that. I think they only really put out a couple LPs. Um, but then she just, you know, started a beautiful solo career. And everyone, everyone knows who anyway, she is the largest selling Irish artist in the history of the world. I mean, besides you too, I think she is for solo artists. I believe she is the, you know, largest grossing artist of all time to come out of Ireland. So, um, yeah, she's pretty fucking amazing. You know, simplistic melodies. A lot of people kind of, you know, get bored of that, but whatever. I like simplistic piano etude and her voice is haunting and 
just gorgeous and just you know the the ethereal effects and it's just kind of like it's just a huge part of my childhood and i love it dearly all the albums up through you know her her first album i think i said you know probably like 87 i think watermark was 88 um this one was probably closer to like 1990 shepherd moons um but yeah all of it's just kind of timeless it's just gorgeous so um I'm never going to feel guilty or let any of you fuckers laugh at me or throw stones at me for liking Enya so y'all can go fuck yourselves. <laughs> I fucking love Enya. All right. Had to bring out the Enya tapes. Super cool. Pardon me while I wet my whistle. Moving on down the line here. I think this is what we had number four. Yeah. Something like that. <clears throat> no, this is number three. Enya was number four. Number three, I brought this up recently because it was I was <laughs> digging for it and I couldn't find it. I wanted to bring it up for my birthday episode. Um, I turned what? Uh, for, uh, yes, I turned forty-two recently. Um, it gets, gets kind of hard to remember sometimes. Um, I turned forty-two recently, and I went and I did a video about my favorite albums from the year of my birth. I was born in nineteen eighty, and nineteen eighty was a fantastic fucking year for rock and roll. Really, really, really was. And this was on the, I, it was in a box or I thought I had sold it at a record show, but I found it. I found a copy of it, um, in the boxes in the back of the house. And, uh, so I brought it out and she's always been one of my very, very favorite, uh, female artists. Love the shit out of Kate Bush, dude. <laughs> Kate Bush is fucking great. Forever, never more. Um, this album is, but never forever more. Never forever. Wow. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the name of the album. <laughs> Never Forever. By Kate Bush, 1980. Uh, I picked this up initially because I was like, fucking amazing art, you know? And I didn't know anything about her. This was a couple years ago. A guy at the record store was like, oh, yeah, Kate Bush. She's fucking awesome. And I was like, okay, cool. So I bought it. What a charming album. Uh, sonically, too. Wow, all kinds of really cool, uh, psychedelic, fun shit going on. This was probably... You know, right at, I, I don't know if it was her first big breakthrough album. I don't know a lot about her early career. But certainly I've been told and read that this is kind of what put her on the map. Um, and her career just got, you know, bigger and bigger from here on out. Um, but yeah, super cool, oddball, wonderful pop singer extraordinaire. Uh, I wouldn't say, you know, really a pop artist. She was kind of like a cult artist in a way. Um, giant in the UK, obviously that's where she's from, from England, but here in America, I don't think a lot of people, you know, were just kind of, there wasn't like millions of, you know, die hard Kate Bush fans here in America that I can remember. Uh, so, but yeah, obviously a huge following in the UK. Um, rightfully so. She's fucking fantastic. Um, again, likened to that, you know, that kind of like interesting, you know, interesting personality like i mentioned tori amos earlier in the video um kind of the similar a similar vibe similar aesthetic in a sense of that just kind of real interesting mystique that she um has and she she plays a lot of piano too and so um but way more kind of like you know avant and psychedelic and cool uh kate bush is so um yeah, love the shit out of this, you know, babushka, ya yeah, ya. Yeah. <laughs> She's so fucking great. Uh, definitely on my top 10 list of female artists, Kate Bush. Never, forever. 1980. Okay, everybody, getting closer to the end of the video here. Um, maybe just take a quick moment of re a reflection if you will. And uh, don't forget to like, you know, scroll down in the history of my channel, like all my videos, watch some of my content, and subscribe. <laughs> subscribe to my channel, please. Um, anyone that's been hanging around my house for a little while knows that I started a contest about a month ago or so. And um, head over there, watch my contest video, participate in my little contest and drop a line say what's up mage uh here's my four desert island picks that i would take to the desert island that i want to die with and i'll look at it and i'll laugh and i'll be like you're a moron 
you don't want to take this, that, and this, and that. We'll have a great little, you know, argument, quips back and forth, and then you'll never visit my channel ever again. But I got your subscribe, and I'll write it down, because I'm going to get to 500 subscribers. Mark my words. I will achieve this goal. Oh, man, I'm not going to make it. But I'm still going to try. It was a lofty... It was a bit of a lofty kind of undertaking. I understand that. I was well below. Dude, I was even below the 200 mark. I think I had, when I decided, I, when I first started the contest, I think I had like 180 subscribers or something like that. I was like, I'm going to get 500, everybody watch me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even close. But who knows? Maybe I'll get some help from the vinyl community. Um, I could still do it. So whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Go check out my contest. Uh, join. There's going to be a cool prize. There's actually going to be four winners. I'm going to pick four names. So your odds and chances of winning my stupid crap are even greater. Um, so yeah, there's that. Thank you again, everyone, for uh, coming around and letting me chat at you. Just a couple more to mention here. Some of my very, very, very favorite uh, female artists. This is a woman who fronts a sick fucking rock and roll band, a more recent rock and roll band, something I have really only discovered in about the last year. And they happen to be way, way up top at the, um, probably like the number three position on my top 10 of just last year of 2021. Um, this is a group, I had to write her name down because I can't ever remember her name still kind of an up-and-coming artist and I'll remember it from here on out but the group called Wolf Alice the rock band from the UK this album uh what's it called Blue Weekend right the album's called Blue Weekend from 2021 fucking badass but her name is Ellie Rosal uh Rousel it's either Rosal or Rousel um but she is just magnificent Everything you love about that kind of like super cool rock and roll post punk, like you like Joan Jett, yeah, cool. You like fucking Debbie Harry, wonderful. You even like you know Courtney Love and all that kind of shit that was going on in the 90s, excellent. You're gonna fucking love this. It's there's moments of beautiful, just like um, really kind of charming ethereal soft rock moments kind of like shoegazy almost kind of reminiscent of like i was just talking about kate bush you get kind of that her um her vibrato is not as kind of like out there and grandiose as kate bush but she has her tone quality and what she does with her vibrato the way she holds her tone quality when when the vibrato kicks in in her voice See my new feet. It's fucking gorgeous. It's incredibly sexy. Everything about this gal is beyond sexy. <laughs> like she's just fantastic. But what I was saying is she can take that really, like I said, real kind of charming, ethereal, kind of shoegazy stuff, and then she just like I, you know, will turn next tune into just like shredding fucking, you know, punk rock in your face, like screaming. Like it's really great. She's just fantastic. I love everything about her and the band too, these guys that are backing her up and she's, you know, does a lot of the primary songwriting, I'm sure, plays a mean guitar. All of the, the backing uh, musicians on this album are top notch. This album, one of the greatest albums of 2021. Um, so everybody needs to check out Blue Weekend from the band Wolf Alice, headed by Ellie Rosal. Rousel, uh, she's just, ooh, she's wonderful. Just wonderful. Yeah, fantastic album. Up there. Very, very up there. That's uh, like my number two. My number two pick. All right. I know I do this to you guys every single time, but here's my special mention for the evening. Honorary mention. Had to bring this up without any real kind of like weird way of dancing around this topic and trying to be sensitive for everybody out there fuck it i'm not going to try to be sensitive about this uh this is an album called silence and wisdom by a group called du files uh two women who uh made some really really cool intriguing experimental kind of ambient kind of dark kind of just 
experimental acoustic uh instrumental stuff there's some like you know interjections of like um uh, tapes and reels and loops and like vocalizations and poetry and just like like I said super cool experimental electronic mixed with like elements of like you know acoustic guitar and acoustic piano uh, lots of other really cool ideas and things it's just a very artistic amazing project uh, and with what I was saying trying to trying to be sensitive to everyone and everything all the time you know, I wanted to be sensitive to the fact that, like, I assumed that these men were transitioning into being women. Um, and that maybe had a huge part of, you know, their artistry and their entire aesthetic and their, their just everything. And then come to find reading a little bit deeper into what, you know, they were trying to achieve with their artistry was actually kind of like a bald faced lie about a lot of stuff. They like concocted this story about how they met in like in Northern Africa on their way to like some other place in France and like um, their parents, both of their parents like died in a similar fashion. And so they kind of bonded about that. And then I was like, okay, well, are they just, you know, interesting artists that are, you know, they enjoy dressing in women's clothing. Are they actually transsexual? Are they what's, you know, I want to be, I want to be sensitive to all folks here, but anyway, they're just uh, dudes. They still go by their given names, uh, their male persona. Um, they're just uh, interesting art dudes. <laughs> and whatever, sexuality doesn't have to have any part of this conversation. Gender really doesn't have to have any real part of this conversation. Even though we are talking about female artists this evening, I just wanted them to be my special mention. Because outside of whatever gender specificity and outside of uh sexual orientation and whatever the fuck else two women do filets it's pretty badass it's really badass i fucking love it so everyone should celebrate them for who they are and the music they gave us and everyone should celebrate who they are themselves personally you should celebrate yourself whatever you are and whatever you choose to be on this planet is a-okay with me <laughs> Not like you were seeking my approval anyway, right? <laughs> That's what all you fuckers are out there saying right now. Yeah, so everyone check out uh, Du Filets. And this is actually um, a double LP of their their two albums combined. What do you call that? It's not a split. You wouldn't call it a split LP. Whatever. It's just a double LP of two of their albums. This one, I kind of like this one a little bit more, Silence and Wisdom it's called, but the other one on the back called Double Happiness, a little more short and sweet. I kind of like this more experimental, interesting one. So yeah, if you guys like uh, experimental music, you know, and stuff that's kind of like oddball, off the wall, that you can really get enveloped into and just kind of lose yourself, it's pretty fucking amazing. All right. You guys have been great tonight. Thanks for hanging out with me. Here's my final selection of the evening. Evening. This is my favorite, uh, my favorite female artist. Um, everything about her just makes me sing. She's just fantastic. She's such a wonderful personality, so bright and sunny, but at the same time, you can see that kind of like dark, kind of, you know, kind of sad, kind of, I don't know. She's got this really interesting air to her. Um, you know, you've seen her on TV, you've seen her on Joe Rogan's podcast, you've seen her on stage, you've seen her play five or six different instruments, her incredibly gorgeous voice, her even more gorgeous uh, presence, physical presence. Um, she's just amazing. I'm talking about Suzanne Santo. Her name is Suzanne Santo, and she uh, gained some notoriety in the music industry on the world of the stage um, by performing with this duo that she uh, kind of fronted and created called Honey Honey, um, where she played with um, a friend and composer, uh, a guy who plays guitar, I can never remember his name. Uh, he's not listed on the back here, but insanely great guitar player, kind of just folk Americana country, a lot of heart in what he's doing and her too. Um, she primarily plays fiddle on this album. She can also play guitar really well. She plays banjo, she, I mean, yeah, and the set of pipes on this woman. Man, she can sing. Just like an angel. Like a fucking angel. 
everyone check out this album. It's just titled Three. Um, I'm not sure how many albums Honey Honey themselves put out. At least three, probably, right? <laughs> um, but, you know, beyond what Honey Honey did, she has been involved in numerous other projects, obviously a solo career, but she's also been a touring kind of like hired gun, so to speak, uh, for lots of other big names. What's that other, another Irishman? Uh, Hosier, is that how you say his name? Hosier? Something like that. Anyway, she joined a tour with him years ago and really got her feet wet and had to tour with him for like around the globe for like a fucking year or more playing fiddle singing playing guitar all kinds of stuff like did she would open up for him but she would also play with his band and do a lot of collaboration work just insane insane career so far and i think she calls austin tell who doesn't everyone everyone's moved to austin <laughs> the whole world moved to austin um yeah, she calls Austin home now, so you can see her on Joe Rogan's podcast. You can see her on numerous other podcasts. You can, um, you know, she's all over YouTube, all over all forms of media. She's just magnificent, magnificent artist of, of a, a very serious caliber and plays lots of excellent, you know, blues, Americana, rootsy country, just the whole shebang. She's the whole shebang, folks. Um, that's it. Short and sweet tonight. Um, that's a list of, you know, my favorite female artists. Aren't they great? Um, so thanks again for tuning into my stupid little channel. Thanks for being good sports. And, uh, you can go ahead and throw rotten tomatoes at me in the comments. I don't give a shit. So, uh, come back for more this week and, uh, hang out with me some more. We'll talk about some more music and appreciating it and, uh, record collecting. And so, yeah, that's all I got for you. Peace out, everybody.